So we're transitioning over to where we'll be getting fights with the the oceans. I mean, I don't mean like all of them at the same time or all of them back to back. But I think this is where Mishima is going to start directing the spotlight on at least a few of them. We have this first woman and like she's doing stuff in mirrors. She's doing pretty cool so far. Like what's interesting is uh, she's one of the ones I didn't look too much into. I, I don't think we had a lot of information on her like uh, her pitch design, at least that I can remember. I remember Callum just because like he had the uh, I mean the uh, cool atomic powers, and then was it like uh, Lyra just because she had she had the powers that were supposed to be dice magic went to card magic. I don't remember everything uh, on the other guys like it was just because like two of them stood out a little bit more uh, at least for me, uh, but. You have this girl in mirrors, which is pretty cool. Like, she seems to, like, ha like essentially travel in a mirror world and then, like, kind of flip side, do some Nirvana movement, kind of like a... It seems just to be the full mirrored version. It's not the same thing as Nirvana, because Nirvana would switch your uh, light and dark alignment. So, you know, if you're really good, it switched really bad. If you're really bad, you switched really good. This one's just more of, like, straight reversed, because th there was the mentioning that Homura, after getting switched had her uh, mole on the wrong eye, which I thought was actually pretty interesting. So it is like you are transferring the two versions. You're, you're swapping the mirror version of her out with, um, out with, you know, the normal one. And I'm curious as like, are there rules to how this exactly works? Because if you're just swapping them out, is it just like the bad version of Hora? I, I do remember a, not a similar situation, well, some, not the same situation, but a slightly similar to a, a minor degree scene in Rave Master. It was just like, well, like right before they got to the mermaids, and they're in that cave, and like Haru got covered in some weird stuff, and it made like a mean version of him. It was just essentially him, but a jerk. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like a an evil counterpart arc or something like that. You know what I mean? It just was like a small piece where it, you know, had a similar situation, but this seems to be way more tied to the plot rather than something that just, um, occurred. So, I, I am interested, just in general, to see the, the oceans. They aren't the main focus of the arc. Obviously, like, we have Shura, we've got the stuff with Nero, um, and then we have pe uh, people from the, uh, the, the whole interstellar faction showing up, the whole army coming in. So, there's a lot of pieces in play. The oceans are cool, but I, I don't know. I, I think just because it's a Mishima, I fully expect there to be some secret boss between, or like one step above the oceans, but be, uh, you know, but be below whoever the final, like the main villain of the arc is going to be between uh, Nero and Shura. I still want it to be Shura. I think it'd be cooler. And plus, I, I don't know, at least that from what we've been shown so far, I don't think Nero is a fighter. I could easily be wrong on that. My guess right now, still, is just based off of what we've been given. It's because of his ability with his dice to seemingly predict the future or just, like, no specific events. Some form of, like, maybe, like, some just destiny reading stuff, fate, fate gazing abilities or whatever. That he's able to combine that with all his forces and his influence to, uh, to be, like, a, you know, a threat level up to you know, one of the Galactica. But we'll see. It's... It, there's a lot moving right now between these guys, so like it, it's going to be a while until we see Shura do anything. And if Shura does anything and he is powerful, it won't be to the end of the arc. And I personally think that will be a fight between him and Ziggy rather than him and Cheeky. Otherwise, it would I think it would have to be like the entire Eden Zero crew against him. At least that's what makes sense to me. Uh, other than these things, like we have some nice interactions with the Racer and um, you know it, it just. Oh, man, I'm actually forgetting the good one. I was, like, forgetting the freaking big cat dude's name. Because, like, he's, I mean, he's cool, but he hasn't done anything that interesting. It's mostly the fact he's just this massive cat, and he is, like, a fanboy of Rebecca. That's the only thing we really have so far for him. I want to see him do something, like, impressive. Like, I'm very curious if he has an Aether Gear or or anything like his his big battle thing. Or is he just a really big cat? I don't know, I mean, like, that could work for him. He's, like, not just a big cat, he's huge. Dude, he's a giant, so I could see, you know, some form of higher-end ability coming out of, uh, you know, his moveset. But Shiki's, like, in some bad spots. Like, he's trying to combat all of these, 
all these little droids, all these little minions that Shura decided to throw in his general direction. And they ended up setting up a self-destruct. I don't think that Shiki... Like, I was going to say, like, I don't think Shiki's down from that. I don't think Shiki got hit by that. I don't know. I feel like he either... I feel like he either got got out of there, because, like, one of the things about Shiki movement... Movement is his, like, his bread and butter is moving around in different directions and stuff. Or if he could have some kind of, like, gravity force field. Just imagine he's pressing gravity, like, in all directions away from him. And it would just create, like, a, you know, a, a force bubble, essentially, of, of the explosion. I, I don't know if he, if he direct on takes this, if he's gonna be withstanding it very well. Like, I, I, like if he takes this, I think he's gonna be really damaged for, uh, you know, a hot minute until he gets healed. Because the, the thing about Shiki is she's not nearly as durable as somebody, like, you know, obviously, easiest comparison. You look at some like, Natsu. Or if you... Even if you compare him to a lot of the other new gen main characters, I know stats and power levels and stuff different or, uh, differentiate. Like you know, some series it could be way higher than other and whatnot. But Shiki, I, I mean, from the fact that Shiki has been displayed so far, like he is not, he's not like a tank. He's not somebody built to just get wailed on. You know, Natsu's the easiest one to, to to kind of like use that as an example for obvious reasons. But, I mean, like, you, when you compare, like, just, like, the amount of damage he would take versus Shiki. Like, Shiki still gets hurt, but Shiki doesn't have the sheer physical fortitude. His thing is, you know, his movement, his agility, how quick he, uh, how quick he is to, to change direction and how a difficult he would be to catch in a fight and to really uh, kind of keep track of him. That, that was Shiki's whole thing, even in the crossover. Mishima emphasized on that. Like, Shiki is just, he's, he's just, uh, like, he's got a very flexible power. But the biggest thing about him is like how he, flexible his movement is with it. But then it goes back more in the focus on the stuff with Homura. I did like the Moscow uh, scene in there when he's just like you know dressed up as Shiki and he's trying to be uh, he's trying to befriend this uh, Homura, not understanding that you know that something's the matter uh, with her. And there was like a really really badass moment. I mean not maybe badass, a really cool like real clutch moment from Rebecca when she's like trying to figure out the situation and. Pino goes in, uses her EMP, and within that moment, you just have, uh, you have the character jump over. What's, what's her name? Milani? Milani, I think is her name. I'm scrolling down to try and remember exactly. Um, how, yeah, Milani. Uh, she ends up, uh, uh, like, switching over to Wise. And I'm guessing the way that that would work is because Pino would be using the EMP on Homura, not on Milani. Kind of think of it like if you had somebody with, like, a possession-based ability. Like, if you're controlling them from afar, like, Pino EMP'd the area, but she didn't EMP the area where the controller was. She just put it on a different person. She lost control on one, decided just to swap, goes to Wise. But that's when Rebecca uses her, uh, rever her, uh reverse ability, goes back 90 seconds, and Homura is still controlled, but at least at this point, they don't have, you know... Milani with again with somebody with a gun. So, what? How this fight's gonna go? I am, would assume when it comes to the stuff with Hamora, like the reverse more, it's gonna be way more focused on them trying to figure out a way to deal with her, but not really hurt her. Because like it's not just the thing of like Hamora is their ally, because you can still defeat somebody without like you know obviously like killing them or anything crazy. Like if they decide to fight back against Hamora, like you know reverse Hamora. And knocked her out. That'd be one thing. But the thing that I'm looking at it more like is they they can't really do stuff to hurt Homura, like in like Homura's body. And that the reason that is is because they just got to this, they just landed on this planet. They're just getting their mission kind of started. If they take Homura, like if Homura's hurt enough, and you know she doesn't get healing within you know a certain amount of time, she's gonna be out for again until she's able to recover or heal. So taking out one of your better fighters that early would be a huge detriment to their team and their forces. Like, Shiki is, is clearly occupied. Um, Wise, I mean, Wise is, is useful, but obviously he's trapped up in this uh, whole, you know, this whole issue as well. But Homura, Homura is outright, like, a really good fighter. And we haven't really seen what she can do with, like, all of, like, her, her training piece that, uh, you know, clearly everybody got. We didn't see a ton from Homura, like, the fruits of her training. But I'm guessing that's what we're going to see in this fight. So if they ended up hurting Amora too much and she's, you know... Because uh, also I would assume that she's going to take damage from being in this mirror world. 
Like, I, I'm actually very curious how that would work. Like, if shit, just thinking about, like, stats, like, not talking about, um, actual, uh, actual things, but, like, assuming, like, her, say her HP is, is 15, like, maybe, like, her, her body outside of the mirror world takes, like, 5, and then she takes 5 in the mirror world. When it's all over, would she collectively have taken 10 damage? And then, like, would only have a third of her, uh, HP left, or something kind of like that? Or would it be, like, she only takes... Like, she only, like, her body would only actually take the damage she takes in the mirror world, and any damage to the mirror homora is reversed. I don't know. It, it's just, like, a weird setup right now. Um, I, I really want to know where Mishima is going to go with this. I mean, this is the opening, rather. Like, this isn't, this isn't, like, some crazy, too hard to fight opponent. I, I would assume that, you know, it's going to be a medium, me like, a mid-level of difficulty fight. That, like, it would be really crazy if this is already Homura's big fight for the arc. When they, like, as soon as, like, as soon as they land it. Like, not, like, her having an early fight. It's not, Im it's not impossible. Uh, you know, another example, Serious Island, Gaggio. Like, he, he, he had his fight for the arc very early on. And then was out for, all, you know, almost 40 chapters. Like, I, I just don't see that as much with Homura. Mainly because, like, you know, a, a big, big arguing difference, is, you know, in the, in the two situations. Is, like, the level of forces and valuable units in the in their forces. Like, Ajio was strong, but he wasn't nearly as, like, valuable of a fighter uh, to the Fairy Tale Guild as Homura is to the Eden Zero crew right now. Because they have, like, the Fairy Tale had more people, and they had a lot more powerful people than, uh, than Gajo. Whereas Homura, they have people more powerful than Homura, but not that many, and their, their forces are really limited. You have pretty much the Eden Zero crew, and then I would guess Goodwin, and then, you know, if any of the Interstellar show up and decide to you know, continuously be on their side. But look at the look at the numbers of, like, they're going against versus the numbers they have. So, I, I don't know. My guess is medium-level difficulty. It, it looks like it'll be a fun fight. Probably get some more, like, Homura shenanigans. Maybe see, like, a new sword or a new technique from her. Actually, I would really just like to see those claws again. Or maybe Homura have that... Maybe not, uh, maybe not a new sword, but maybe that pseudo-overdrive, you know, where the ether lines are starting to move off their body. I mean, hers is technically off her body with her sword, but, you know, obviously, you know what I mean. You know, Shiki's having the horns and stuff, Jin having the lines all over the place. But anyway, other than that, though, uh, comment below, thumbs up the video, but friend the like button, the subscribe button, and tell me, uh, you know, tell me your thoughts are about this fight. Like, does anyone really think it's going to be that difficult of a fight for Homura? If Homura is any more set than, like, a medium-level difficulty, like, if she has to, to sit down and recover after this fight... Like, she's out of breath and just, like, you know, one of the things like she'd be sweating and, like, hurt. She's like, oh, you know, give me a breather. And, you know, comes back after X amount of chapters. I'd be surprised. I see it just as, like, her taking damage and then, like, she'll still be fine to walk. She'll be, like, having uh, having trouble keeping herself standing and stuff like that. Especially because, like, the, the Milani doesn't seem like a physical fighter. I'm guessing she's going to be, like, more like a caster where she's ranged and, you know, is trying to keep distance. You know, maybe move from, from mirror to mirror. Kind of like, um... Haku from Naruto. That that's kind of maybe not the, not the same fighting style, but kind of like the way that I see it moving through the mirrors, trying not to get hit. But anyway, on that comment below, thumbs up the video, friend like button, subscribe button, check out my other videos. Friend, that I appreciate everyone's already subscribed. Thank you all for listening.